these rats were playing in the woods. One of some matches and that's no good. Yeah. Listen to smoke before you give it a try. Only you. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Fire. Cause there's nothing very funny about drinking that fight. Nothing very nice. I'm a homeless man. So if a gorgeous force is what you desire, don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Only you. Can prevent wildfires. Fire! Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory. Today, uh, my guest, uh, Larry Vetter, he's the Democratic candidate for town council in Smithtown. And I really haven't been covering many candidates because, quite honestly, it's a little bit boring. And people who are interested sort of had their minds made up, I think. People who are Democrats tend to vote Democrat, Republicans vote Republican. And in Smithtown, a lot of people don't really look at the candidates and they just vote for the same people over and over again. Some of them may be good, some may not be so good. But when I saw the press release last week about uh, Larry Vetter running for town council, it struck me that he's a type of person that we want to have run and be in office for several reasons, and we're going to discuss them on the show. But one of the things that I'm passionate about is that our whole government should not be run by attorneys. Yes, we could have some attorneys because you do make laws, you discuss laws, but you know what? We shouldn't have 80% of people in public office being attorneys. Uh, they don't represent the average person. You know, they charge a lot per hour, more than most of us make. Um, it's just a different aspect. You know, they, they're in court all the time. They know the law is in and out. And they're sort of part of the in-team. And I've always said we need somebody who, who really represents us and who, who lives in the community and is not a career politician and is getting into it for the right reasons. And from what I read about my next guest, he's a, a successful businessman uh, in, in our district, in the district of Smithtown and, and Hopog. And when I read it, I said, you know what? Why is this guy getting into it? Because politics is tough. It takes up a lot of your time. From, in most cases, uh, it's a pay cut from what you're doing. And if you lose, you just went out there and just threw yourself out there. So I'm going to ask Larry today, what the heck is making him run? Larry, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Gary. Let's start off at the beginning. Tell me your background, what you do for a living, where you grew up. I believe you, you've been in Smithtown uh, for 30 years, raised your family. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm the quintessential Long Islander. I was born in Queens. My parents moved out to Lindenhurst when I was very young. Grew up in Lindenhurst. Um, spent my formative years there. And then in 1979, I moved to Smithtown. Okay. Um, married. I have four children, two of my own, two stepchildren. Um, and I'm still living in the same house I bought in 1979. Okay. And uh, what do you do for a living? I've always been in the private sector for all my life. I originally started out in uh, uh, logistics and distribution. I did that for quite a number of years. Uh, during the 1980s, that field started to dry up a little bit on Long Island. Okay. Um, distribution was sort of a middleman when it came to getting products to the end point. And uh, a lot of the manufacturers decided to eliminate the middleman. So that whole position sort of dried up in a hurry. So in the late 1980s, I had an unusual opportunity to get involved in a new industry called the environmental industry, which was really just budding at that time. It had uh, it begun in the early 80s and is starting to get its legs towards the late 80s. And I became involved in around 1990 in that industry. Uh, over the past 25 years, I've been within that industry. I've worked for a number of larger companies. And six and a half years ago, I started my own small consulting firm uh, I started initially out of my house, and right now I have an office in the Lindenhurst area. Okay. And what makes you, have you ever run for office before? I have never run for office before, no. About 10 years ago, I became involved with the Democrats in Smithtown. Uh, I've lived here for a long time. I've seen some really nice things in Smithtown that I like a lot. We have a beautiful landscape. We have some really nice uh, environment there. But I also see some things that could use some improvements. And I've watched the slow, steady decline over the years of, of downtown, all the towns that we have in the various towns of Smithtown. 
and I've watched that deteriorate. I've watched the Hapag Industrial Park deteriorate over the years. And uh, there's a few things that I've, I've, I've had some concerns over. So 10 years ago, I got involved with the Democrats, mostly in the background initially. I worked on a couple of campaigns pretty diligently in the past. And uh, as you know, um, Democrats don't fare too well in Smithtown. Right, right. Well, that, that, there seems to be a little bit of a shift. But yes, uh, as they don't. But you know, when you talk to people out in the field, there are, there are a lot of Democrats in Smithtown. But from what I've seen, people get so wrapped up in, in the day to day and they don't watch local, uh, the local town politics anymore. And they tend to just vote for the names that, that they see that's familiar. So knowing that, you obviously, as you said, they don't fare that well. And, it's certainly going to be an, an uphill battle for you, yet you're putting yourself out there anyway. What's making you do this? Well, yeah, you're right. It's a huge uphill battle, and I, I recognize that. But the thing is that um, we've, we've tried over the last few years uh, the tried and true methods of, of uh, getting people elected. And I really feel that it's time for maybe a little bit of a different change. Part of the change right now is sitting here talking to you, right. which is a little bit something different. I intend to write a few more articles that I hope to get published locally. Uh, we've already had uh, a very nice article published by uh, Smithtown News about us uh, and the campaign. So we have a number of things going in that direction. I, my campaign is going to be about educating and educating the public. I have a few issues that I'm very passionate about, the main one being sewers. Uh, I've, lived, I've grown up on Long Island. I lived in Lindenhurst when I was young. I lived through the debacle of the Southwest Sewer District. However, the end result is something that was really necessary down there. Sewers were necessary down there. We have a very, very dense population on Long Island. We're contaminating our groundwater at a very rapid pace right now. Uh, a lot of this I've seen thanks to the business I'm in. I'm in the environmental industry, right. so we do a lot of subsurface investigations. I see what's going into the groundwater on a pretty regular basis, and it's not pretty. And uh, if we don't start addressing that situation soon, there aren't going to be a lot of future generations that are going to have fresh water on Long Island. Right. Now, what do you tell the person watching it who says, you know what, I don't, I don't really care about sewers. What do I need sewers? Maybe all it's going to do is cost me more money because now I got to pay to install a central line to my house and, and I have to pay a monthly sewer fee. I got my cesspool. I got sand on my ground. It works fine. My drinking water is good. And you know what? Down the road, they'll find a way to purify water or change the salt water to fresh water. And it's, it's something hard to put your finger on. Why does somebody like that care? Because this is a big investment. Well, why should, a, why should somebody care? It's a huge investment. But the thing is that we are actually contaminating our groundwater on a rapid basis. We're, we're essentially defecating into our groundwater on a daily basis. Right. When you look at some of the third world countries where you see them on one side of the river washing their clothes and, and using it for toilet facilities, and on the other side of the river they're scooping up the water for their right. dinners, we're essentially doing the same thing. I, mean, I think I read that the, that the aquifers, we, you know, we used to be up at whatever level it was at the top of it, then we went to the middle. Now we're like going to the bottom of the aquifers right. to try to We keep going to get deeper and deeper aquifers, but we're finding that the contamination is finding its way down deeper and deeper all the time. There's a reason why there's chlorine in our drinking water. Right. It's not a natural byproduct of drinking water. It's being put in there on purpose, and that's to, to minimize the bacterial impact by it. Right, right. But does that hurt the, the biological uh, way of, of, the, of a breaking down naturally? Does that stop it having, you know, adding the chlorine to the water? Well, adding the chlorine to the water is for one purpose only, and that's to kill bacteria. Okay. And to purify. So you're saying we have to add more because we're we trying to add mask more the problem. We have to add more because we're adding more and more contaminants into right. it. And I can't imagine that water that's, that's good for you. No, exactly. It's, it's not good I mean, I know we smell. You can, you can smell the chlorine, you can especially if you're used it. to drinking bottled water without it. Yeah, you can absolutely smell it. So the person watching this, they're concerned. Somebody's uh, in Smithtown, say they're in their 40s. Should they care? Should they vote for somebody who's going to push for sewers? Or is that just going to raise their bill, you know? Well, here's this, the thing right now. There is a Suffolk County initiative on, on the town, on board right now, where there's been a, a significant chunk of money granted to Suffolk County for building sewers. Okay. Smithtown can be a, a big part of that. Right. So there is a so significant fight chunk of money. Yeah, we need to and fight for it. We have to act like we, we care. If nobody cares, it won't happen. That's exactly it. We've had a history in Smithtown of looking a gift horse in the mouth. Right. There have been a number of different initiatives, a number of different items that they had that we basically snubbed. Right. for want of a better term. Um, you can look at the Wisconsin Armory as one hot potato that went back and forth for a lot of years. Kings right. Park is a hot potato that's still going back and forth. Uh, just a couple of years ago, very recently, there's a downtown initiative being, uh, being brought up forward by Suffolk County. Uh, there's some money set aside for that, and that's ongoing right now, where certain, several downtowns are being improved with monies that's, that they got from the state and from federal uh, grants. 
and uh, we essentially snub that too. What I'm afraid of is that we're going to snub the sewers as well too, unless we have somebody on board that's going to fight and advocate for it. Right, and I think the big thing is that, I mean, hopefully we, we will, and everybody will say, hey, this, the time has come, and at least if you're there, you, you know what you're talking about because you're, you're an environmental engineer. Well, sewers so. are not a political... They're not a political football. Right. To me, sewers are a science end of it and a health and safety end of it. That's yeah. the important, that's the angle I'm looking at. I'm not looking at it as, is it a good political move, is it a bad political move? Right. It's a move that's necessary, not only for the future, but for our current health. Right. Now, I look at Smithtown, I think a lot of people looking at it and say, you know what, we've got a pretty clean town. Yeah, the Main Street is miss has some open stores in it, but you know, a lot of Main Streets do. As you mentioned, we have, we have a beautiful town, we have a lot of parks, and I think a lot of people looking at it say, you know what, it's been working. Our taxes are high, but they're not higher than everywhere else on Long Island. Why, why do we need a change in government? I think one of the things you mentioned, you've noticed a steady, a steady decline. Right. So this is like, a, like the lobster in the pot of water. You know, it, everything was great, but do you feel like now we're getting to the point where, hey, this is it. We need to do something or our town is just gonna, gonna well, full collapse or fall apart. The one thing I'll disagree with you is I don't necessarily think it's been working in our town. I okay. think that we've been going in a wrong direction slowly for quite some time. One of, it, one of the issues has been um, younger people in our town. We're no different than any, anywhere else on Long Island. We have a brain drain. Right. And I'm well aware of that. I have, I'm a full-fledged member of the brain drain. I have <laughs> four kids. Four adult children, they're all professionals. None of them live on Long Island. Right. None of them intend to live on Long Island anymore. That's troublesome to me. These are the kind of people that we want on Long Island. They're professionals, they're hard workers, they're good community members. They're the type of people that we want. And I don't think I'm alone with that. I think there's a lot of people that are like that. I have a lot of friends my age whose kids are gone and, and with no intention to come back. And I think that in the long run, if we don't start making our town more appealing and more interesting to, to draw young people into it, we're becoming an aging population. Many of the people are going to want to sell their houses and possibly downsize, maybe move into an adult community someday. You're not going to be able to sell your house anymore. Right. There's been a slow, slow decrease, so it's a slow, steady decrease in the value of houses. That's been gone going for a number of years now, and I don't see that changing. I've, I've read some um, statistics that show that there's going to be a small drop again this year in, in the value of homes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much further that's going to happen. And if we don't have younger people that are moving into our area that wanted to take up the mantle and, and be here, uh, I think we're going to see some, some serious consequences in the future. So what, what else do we do about it? We mentioned the sewers, but that's not going to really immediately in the short term no. change the property value. What do we do? When I, I know when I bought a house, I live in Smithtown, and when I bought a house, one of the things I liked was that we had a Main Street. And was it thriving? I, think it, I don't know if it was thriving is the answer, but you can drive down. There were stores. There was restaurants. And I liked that that was like the center of the community. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of open stores now, and, and our Main Street is, is declining. Is, is that something that affects the home value? Or, or do many people like to buy, like Smithtown, because of our Main Street? You know, I, I recognize the fact that a lot of our buying has changed. A lot of it's done on, on, uh, on the Internet at this point. Not a lot of people go to downtowns, a lot of people go to malls and big shops and that sort of thing. However, there still seems to be a place for the downtowns. And if you take a look at some of the communities that are thriving right now on Long Island, that are, that are changing and growing and becoming positive, it's communities that have really addressed the downtown areas. One of them being Bayshore, which has become a very thriving community. East Pat Patrick, Patrick too, is East unbelievable Patrick's what they've a very, done. very thriving community. Those are both works in progress Do right we now. want that in Smithtown? I sometimes I wonder if, if, if people want I absolutely it. would love to see that, yes. Right. It's drawing in young people. It's drawing in fresh blood, new ideas, drawing in new businesses. Yes, I think that so we what absolutely do So, Larry, what, what do we do to fix it? I mean, it's easy. Everyone, when they run for office, they say, the downtown needs to be fixed. What no, do right. we do to fix the downtown? Absolutely. The first thing that we do is we take advantage of the initiative being offered by Suffolk County. That's step number one. They have a number of different ways that they can help you in the downtown. And you have to really start a dialogue with Suffolk County and get involved in it. You can't walk away from that and just say, we're not interested. Do you think that dialogue hasn't been there? My gut feeling is it hasn't been there. Okay. So you have a dialogue with, with them and we try to partner and, uh, and do what? See what's there to offer. Right. See what type of help they're talking about. I understand there's some sort of architectural help that's out there right now. Whether we right. need that or not, I don't really know. Right. But it's there. So there are avenues that we can get help. So you get on the town board uh, and you get elected this November. What do you, what do you envision doing on the town board? And, and what changes do you 
see making that, that would make a difference? Do you think we need more stores? Do, what, what is it that we need to do? I mean, the road is only, that's always been an issue is traffic and that's not going to change. There's buildings on both sides of the road. So that's not going to, to change. What, what do you see actually, actually changing if you're on the town board and now, you're, now you have a vote? What, what is it that you would vote to change? Well, first of all, I'm gonna be a fresh set of eyes and mm -hmm. I'm gonna be a different set of eyes than what we've had in this town. There, as far as I know, uh, there are the two incumbents that I'm running against, neither one of them has any uh, experience in private industry whatsoever. I believe most of the people that I live with in my town uh, work in private industry. So I have a different perspective. I, I come from a world where if I don't have enough money, I can't just raise rates or right. I can't just raise taxes. I have to do something creative. I have to streamline. I have to partner things together. I have to become very creative and think of different ways to make my business work. Because if I don't, next week I won't have a paycheck. Right, right. And it's very simple. So there's that pressure that, that, that's in there. But I, w I believe I will bring that into the town as, as my way of doing things. Right. Now what about the taxes? I, there's always a lot of talk about taxes. And although I've heard people say, well, our taxes aren't that bad compared to some of the towns that sur surround Smithtown, I said, that, that doesn't make me feel any better. Well, but, so what can we do? I mean, I know a lot of it is limited by uh, the school. I don't know if there's anything that the town board can do about that. But w what is it that you can do to lower the taxes? Is, is there waste? Do we have to cut back what we do? What, what can we do to fix well, the Well, I've heard the same thing you've heard, that our taxes aren't that, that comparatively. All I know is I pay a lot of taxes. <laughs> right, right. You know, and uh, it doesn't make me feel any better to know that maybe another town's paying a little exactly. bit more. I'm still paying a lot I'm of taxes. I'm with you. Yes, and I also hear the same thing too. Well, part, a big chunk of the taxes is school taxes. Oops, we can't do anything about that. Oh, another chunk of the taxes are the library. Oops, we can't do anything about that. But a chunk's a chunk. And there's a lot of, <laughs> right, there's a lot of reasons about what we can't do anything about. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to what I said before, I'm in business. If something is not working right, I have to figure a way around it, no matter what. Right. And if, if I right now believe that something is not quite working right in our town, and I have to believe that there's a way around it. Right. And as, another thing is, they, I mean, our town, we get a lot of money from the uh, Hop Hog Industrial Park. It's a huge tax revenue. I forget the number, but it's maybe the second or third largest in, in the country. It's claimed to be the largest uh, east of the Mississippi. I don't okay, know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. That's what the HIA claims. But, but I, I look at that, and, and, I, and I'm a business owner myself, and when I look in there, it's almost impossible to do it, and I, and I feel that a lot of people, for, and from my perspective, the only reason people have a business there is because they have to, because they live here, because we love Long Island, and Smithtown's a beautiful town, we have beaches, you know, we have plenty of parks, but if you talk to people, most of the people will tell you, you know what, if I could leave, I'd get the hell out of here and move down south and take, take my business with me. So people are sort of here with the gun to their head. I can't see many people moving to the Hop Hog Industrial Park. What can we do? I mean, we have a lot of brain power here on Long Island, and we have a big economy, so you could ship, but you, you almost can't get off Long Island because it's too expensive. The, tax, uh, the, the tolls are high, the gas prices are high. What can we do to reinvigorate? Because a lot of empty buildings in the Hop Hog Industrial Park. Right. What can we do to the reinvigorate? The Hop Hog Industrial that? Park is, I've watched it grow from nothing, become a huge, huge success, and watch it fritter away to what it is today. And you're right, right now there's a lot of underutilized space in the Hop Hog Industrial Park. Manufacturing is uh, almost a thing of the past on Long Island. Logistics is a serious issue to deal with. Getting products, getting raw materials on Long Island, getting finished products off Long Island is a very expensive process and frankly it's, it's not worth it to a lot of companies. So we have to sort of redirect the way we want to go. We have to bring the kind of jobs and the kind of businesses to Long Island that the kids are looking for, the young people are looking for today. And that's technology. We have to really put an effort into technology. Our town does not have any sort of uh, department or anybody really that's involved in trying to draw business into our town. Several towns have adopted industrial development uh, groups right. within them already. We don't have anything like that. And I'm not saying to add another person to the payroll, but there's probably somebody within the organization that can at least address some of those issues and maybe become more aggressive and go talk to some of these companies that are out there. See what you could bring out here. As if you're bringing in a technology company and they're bringing their stuff in electronically and shipping it back out electronically, that's not costing them anything to right, ship right. trucks across bridges. Right, right. So that's the types of industry we have to have here. Truthfully, we're not going to get a manufacturer out here anymore. Right. Well, I think we always talk about bringing manufacturing jobs, and I think you hit the nail on the head. Look, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It, you know, the tolls are high, the, we, we cost too much to live here, so 
we're done with that. You know, right. you're not going to have people, you know, building pieces of wood, you know, at, uh, right. at minimum wage. It just, it just doesn't make sense. But, you know, technology, right. we got a lot of smart people here on uh, That's exactly it. Yeah. We, we, we have a lot of hardworking people in Smithtown, right. a lot of successful people, and they have a lot of successful, hardworking kids, uh, all very well educated and capable of doing a lot of different things. And the technology field is where they're all interested right now. Mm -hmm. And there's no place really to go. And that's what I wanted. I would hope to be able to bring in. Well, I will say, Larry, you got some fresh ideas, and uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing because the democratic process doesn't work unless you have real candidates running against the incumbents. Um, you know, whether you believe in term limits or not. So, you know, sort of the if you don't do anything about it, you're just giving up this this job. And by you putting yourself out there, which is tough, you know, with work. And as you said, you got enough hill battle. And we really appreciate. I appreciate what you're doing because that's what this process is all about. And if nothing else, to start, you're you're getting people to talk about the real issues that we need to talk about. Larry Vetter, right. thank you very much. Thank if anybody you. wants to reach you or get involved in your campaign, uh, you have a Facebook page that they can reach, a website. The they Democratic reach, Committee, where they do they reach you? They can reach me through the Democratic Committee. So they can go to the Smithtown Democratic Committee, and we'll put that number on the bottom of the screen. And I believe they have a Facebook page also. Yes, you can look up Smithtown Democrats and get involved in right. Larry's. And they can contact me through that. I'm Gary Jacobs, and this is Long Island Baxter. It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. Today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. All over America, people are taking the National Radon Test. Have you? You put me on the spot. Have you heard of radon? I've never, I never thought about it. I don't know. I think it's a secret killer or a silent killer. Poison gas that seeps into the house. That's one of the tests we did with the inspector before buying the home. Why worry about it? Why worry? Take the national radon test. True or false? Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. True. I'd say false. No, it's true. I thought of cigarettes and then pollution. That's something new to me. Radon can penetrate a concrete block. It's false. False? False? It's true. I wouldn't know how they could protect you from that. It's scary. The Office of the Surgeon General recommends all homes be tested for radon. False? It's true. True? I should know about it because I worked in the hospital for many years. So it's bad. We should get our house tested. Sure, I'll call it. 1-800-SOS-RADON. How can you not call? 1-800-SOS-RADON. <laughs> R-A-D-O-N. I propose three cheers for those we leave behind. Get up, get up. <laughs>
Congratulations. It's in paper now. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. Thanks. Proud of you. All right. Anson Elliott. Who's going to salute him? <laughs> Guys, who gets to salute him first? Oh. <laughs> Here's the 2 1. Hi, I'm Barry Bonds for RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. In my league, we hit home runs without a designated hitter. But if you want to get home safe, there should always be a designated driver. So when you're with someone who is drinking, take their keys. Call a cab or drive them home yourself. Because friends don't let friends drive drunk. Your generous support has made it possible for United Way to help build strong communities across America for over a hundred years. Thank you. Now more than ever, it's crucial that we maintain the strength and vitality of our neighborhoods, towns, and cities. United Way is active in local communities 365 days a year, making a measurable difference in the lives of Americans. Helping local communities identify pressing issues and opportunities and committing the resources necessary to address them. United Way helps to strengthen America one community at a time. Your local United Way has relied on your generous support for years. Your community is counting on you. Please continue to support your local United Way. Strong communities mean a stronger America. Think being a big brother means you always have to be a perfect role model? Nice. Think again. <laughs> to learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS. Look, there's a moose. Where? Over there. Oh, yeah. Look, over there, I see a fish. A fish with two stripes. <sighs> Spend time with kids anytime, and it helps prevent crime. It's that easy. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many.